Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I will be showing you how to make... And I'm going to show you how to do it using stock plugins. Is such a thing even possible? Well, stock plugins and serum, because honestly, every producer should have serum. It literally does everything. It can do basses, it can do leads, it can do pads, drums. It could probably make me coffee in the morning. Legit, it's the only plugin I've bought in the last three years. And it's super cheap. With Splice, you can do rent to own. Honestly, not even sponsored, but Splice, Steve Duda, if you're watching, hit me up. We're gonna get into it. Let me show you how this is done. Since it's a vocal chop, we use an acapella. I found this acapella in the Somatic Son Holo pack. It's got some really cool melodies. You never wait for me, you never wait for me. With any vocal chop, what I like to do is I like to transpose it to a certain key that I know I'm gonna be using. So for this song, I wanted to put it into G major. Put it down two semitones. But then I would also octave it up. I transpose it to a different key first so I get a nicer tone versus getting that chipmunk vocal. So if I was to do it all the way to 12 semitones, one, it wouldn't be in the right key, and two, we'd get major chipmunk vibes. Isn't that a for me? Don't want that at all. At 10 semitones, we have that nice, happy medium. I use formants here. I could wait a thousand days to try and find a really nice tone. Next thing I do is I try to find really cool vocal chops inside the sample. So I'll go around, I'll just pick random spots, I could hit the space bar. D, D, could see I, I, that would be a cool one there. We are looking for stuff that has really nice transients and a lot of syllables. That's cool, that can definitely be used. Yeah. Ones with spaces in it, cool timings, those turn out really well. The only ones you want to avoid are the really long wobbly notes. Those don't really work out too well, or with wonky timing. Not those. I assemble them into a normal vocal chop. Something catchy, something repetitive. Sound like this. You're taking this acapella and making your own melody. You want to turn it into a hook. The next thing I want to do, we want to make a chord progression that goes along with it. So we make a new track, open up Serum, and set it just to basic shapes. And you're just going to make a chord progression. And since I know the key that I was writing in, G major, I'm going to do a chord progression in that key. It needs to complement. You're writing the chord progression for the vocal chop. For reference, the chords I used are E minor 9, C major 9, A minor 7th, and B minor 9th. So I use a lot of 7th and 9th chords. Rhythm, everything's on the beat. So next, rename this carrier and then deactivate it. Get rid of it. What? Why on earth would I do that? Chill, we're gonna get to that. When I first heard this sound, I really needed to know how to make it. What I knew from it is it was a vocal chop and somehow Skrillex had turned it into future bass chords. So I tried all sorts of different things, chopping the vocals, stacking them, switching around the semitones so they sounded like chords. I've tried putting it into a sampler, playing the chords on MIDI, but everything I made sounded like hot, garbage until it was after a big show in Montreal. I was hanging out at the hotel with a few other producers and over a feast of McDonald's graciously delivered by Uber Eats, the topic of this vocal chop synth had come up. One producer there, this insanely talented German dude, he says one word to me. He goes, vocal. Love it. This is the sound. Let's get to the good stuff. We go back to our beautiful vocal chop here. The way it all comes together is with three main components. So it's just a vocoder, it's an OTT, and it's auto pan. That's it. First thing we want to start off with is our vocoder. What you want to do is you want to set the carrier up here to external. And we're going to pick our audio from carrier. That's why we named it carrier. What does that mean? What did we just do? So this is why we made the chord progression. What's essentially happening is we're running serum through the vocoder. Then the vocoder is going to process it and add harmonics to the vocal based on the chords that we picked. So right now it'll sound like this. Woo! Listen to all those harmonics. That's rad. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to turn on OTT to like really thicken it up. Then I'm gonna drag the dry wet until the original vocal chop and the harmonics are balanced. And why did I put OTT on before I started dragging the dry wet? Because the way OTT works is it brings out harmonics in the sound already. If you've watched my videos before, I've said this. The reason I do that is because by having OTT on, I get a more accurate version of the sound that I want without it. It's hard to tell, but when it's nice and thick, Mm. Woo! Woo! Calling the producer! 
Officer Police, hello, excuse me. Somebody called? What's going on here? Yup, yup, that's the guy. He's just copying other sounds and he doesn't want anybody to become unique producers. Said no one ever. I am showing you these things because you're probably interested in seeing how this specific sound was made. I mean, you wouldn't be here watching right now if you didn't. But my point is, a great way to find your unique sound is to learn how other sounds are made and then put your own twist to it. There's no sense reinventing the wheel. Instead, just grab the wheel. Do your own thing with it. At the end of this video, I'll be showing you some techniques to make it your own. Okay, you got that? Sweet. Back to the tutorial. And then from there, you just tweak some settings. You want to make sure that the vocoder is set to precise. Make sure your bands are at 20. And up here is a little EQ, and you can adjust the levels of the bands here. And I just like to cut out the mids a little bit as well, just to give the vocal chop and the vocoder harmonics a bit more balance. <laughs> The sound is already super cool. You could leave it like that, or to give it that extra little movement, that's where auto pan comes in here. Using these settings, check out what it does to it. We're getting wavy. The basis of this sound comes from these settings and through automation. So hitting A on Ableton, we can open up our automations. And you can see for the rate, I automate it so it stays at a default of 1 8th. And then I'll just do little 1 16th to give it that fast movement. That just as an accent, but throughout it just stays at 1 8. <laughs> then the next thing I do is I automate the amount and I keep it around 80% here. That just makes sure the effect doesn't come through super strong. It's all about that balance of finding the movement versus the sound. I turn it off on certain points to let certain longer notes breathe. <laughs> It's a bit of trial and error, but you keep listening back to the loop and you can hear certain points where you want it to be wavy or you want it to stop. You, you get a feel for it. It's just practice. That's the sound. That's it. And then a bit of EQ and some reverb. Maybe add some trap drum with the good old fake drop. And of course, the 808. There you have it. That's it. As I said earlier, I talked about some cool stuff you can do to this sound to make it your own. I'm going to show you really quick how to do that. If we go back into Serum, you can actually turn the unison up, give it a bit of detune to thicken it up. I added a bit of phaser as well using these settings to give it a bit of movement as well. And then some hyper dimension to give it some width. Really, really careful when you're doing this. You don't want to go too overboard with sound design inside of Serum because the way the vocoder works is it needs a clean sound to go through it. So the simpler you can keep your sound, the better. Just make really, really tiny adjustments. For the really cool, different sounds you can make, it's all going to be done in the vocoder. For example, I've got this formant knob. That'll really change the tone of the vocal. <laughs> something in a higher register you can do stuff like that whenever I use my vocal I like to put the formant down because I've got a lower voice than a female singer so I get stuff like of course there's always the dry wet if you want to add more of the vocoder in depth knob is kind of the same as the dry wet it brings the chords out more so if you want to blend more of the synth sound in there, use depth. Or if you want less, you want more of a breathy sound. So many cool little things you can do. You can even go into the vocal sample if you want. Change the formants as well. All of this can be automated too. Just experiment. But that brings us to an end. If you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss a video. I would love to hear what you're making with this sound. Tweet at me, send it to me on Instagram. Here's my links. Please follow me, please. The validation I need is real. And yes, yes, before you ask, the project file for this is free. Like I said, it's all stock plugins. All you really need is Serum. Amazing. Love it. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.